This is the Queen of Murlocs, the community manager of Bonus Roll Productions, here with our ongoing coverage of World of Warcraft Dragonflight Alpha. Today, we are taking a look at the revamped Druid Talent Trees. Keep in mind that this is alpha coverage and everything discussed today is likely to change before the release of the live game. Now, let's get started. As with previous expansions, the Druid is the only class with four specializations, Guardian, Restoration, Balance, and Feral. Like the other classes available to play in Alpha, there is only one general tree, with spells and upgrades that combine in tandem with the talent tree of your chosen spec. Fans of the Druid class, especially fans who have played in the early days of World of Warcraft, will likely be happy to see a return to the more hybrid and utility playstyle approach Druids are famous for. With that in mind, we're going to start with the general talent tree that all specs will use. Similar to the Conduit system in Shadowlands, your general tree is made with player choice in mind. You really have to think hard in terms of what you choose in order to make your class as powerful as possible. On the general tree, you will notice some familiar spells such as Frenzied Regeneration, Rejuvenation, and Starfire. Most of these spells will be chosen by default according to your spec. At first glance, you will notice on the far right side that some talent spells are more geared toward the Balance and Resto side while on the other side you will see spells more geared towards Guardian and Feral. If you look more closely, you will notice something is a little bit different in the Alpha Trees. For example, currently in Shadowlands, when you choose your Balance spec, you receive your Moonkin form automatically. However, in this version of the Alpha, Moonkin form is in the general talent tree. So if you want to get your Owlbear form, you will have to spend a talent to receive it. Other spells we are used to receiving by default, such as Hibernate and Cyclone, have also moved to the general talent tree. Similar to the conduit system again, you will need to make some choices about what kind of utility you would like your spec to have. The druid class has always been one of the more flexible specs, and it's good to see that Blizzard is working hard to return to some form of utility playstyle. I personally am looking forward to future development. Let's continue with some examples. In the general tree, if you choose a spec such as Feral, but you would like to utilize some healing spells for PvP purposes, for example, you can use those talent points on your general tree for some healing specific spells, or vice versa. Or, if you would like to unlock your interrupt spell, you will need to choose beneficial talents to get there, such as increased damage or increased armor. If you would like to mix things up, you could skip Skull Badge altogether and just unlock increased armor and physical damage. Branch out to your Iron First spell, then select Thick Hide, and then move on to unlock Ursoc's Endurance, which absorbs a small amount of damage over 8 seconds. It's essentially bark skin with a new fancy name. Basically, you will be a tanking PvP cat. Now, let's move on to the Balance Talent Point tree. As we can see here, Eclipse moved from a default spell to a Talent Point spell. Now, depending on what kind of damage you want to dish out as Moonkin, there are several branches and combos you can take to get there. We see some familiar spells returning as Talents, such as Force of Nature and Nature's Balance. Now, if someone were to main Balanced Druid, the usual path is to increase overall damage as opposed to single target. One would go with Nature's Balance talent instead, as it generates Astral Power every two seconds while in combat. Using it out of combat puts the Astral Power to 50% at all times, meaning no Astral Starvation. With the next set of points, we would promptly activate Improved Moonkin form to get that extra 15% damage. While one branch grants you faster spell casts, the other helps prevent loss of power and a small increase of damage. Very important. At the 22 point threshold, it gets a bit tricky. You could just go for single damage power and activate shooting stars, which unleashes a extra tick of damage while Moonfire and Sunfire are also ticking, followed by Starlord for increased haste. Then your choices are Umbral Intensity, Twin Moons with Stellar Flare and Solstice. Altogether you get extra damage over time spells, a bit of area of effect damage or AoE, and if you activated your Starfall damage with Solstice, the first 6 seconds of every Eclipse and Shooting Stars falls 250% more once activated or procced. Just imagine, a lot of Meteors falling down constantly on rotation. Adding the new spell Sizagi, I'm thinking that is a placeholder name, will blast all targets between you and the selected area for astral damage while also applying Moonfire and Sunfire. One would assume that that it's going to be used for a lot of single target damage as well as some kind of mob kiting in raids for that last spell. 
Now, we're going to go ahead and move on to the Guardian Tree. After activating Maul, you can branch out to either Gore or Survival Instincts. Of course, if you are going to tank, you might be better off going after Survival Instincts, which reduce all damage taken by 50% for 6 seconds. Then, there's Improved Survival Instincts, which gives the spell 2 extra charges for damage mitigation. If a player possibly wants to improve threat along with your defense, you can go towards the improved mangle branch, then improved bear form. A player can receive increased damage as well as help with rage starvation if you're low on gear. There is also a new talent spell called Gory Fur, where mangle has a 15% chance to reduce the rage cost of your next iron fur by 25%. Since iron fur is actually in the general tree, if you were going guardian spec, a good point to spend should definitely be on iron fur. At this point of customization, you'll likely find yourself with extra talent points to spend. Perhaps Infected Wounds or Ursoc's Endurance? With Infected Wounds, you can slow the enemy down for 12 seconds by 50%. With Ursoc's Endurance, you increase the duration of Barkskin and Iron Fur by 1 second. At the 20 point talent requirement, new spells called Dream of Scenarius, Ursoc's Fury, Guardian of Balloon, and After the Wildfire gives you the option to either become some form of pseudo-healing tank or a tank with extra absorbs at their disposal. With Dream of Scenarius, if you take non-periodic damage, you have a chance equal to your critical strike to cause your next regrowth to be instant, free, and castable in all forms. However, this benefit will not happen more than once every 20 seconds. The spell, after the wildfire, can heal your nearby allies for 3% of their health every time a tank spends 200 rage. There is definitely a PvP benefit there. Let's move on to the Restoration Tree. At first glance, it looks like it's just as complex as our general tree. While Guardian and Balance are more straightforward, it looks like you'll have to really pay attention to a path of healing you'd like to take. Nature's Swiftness returns to the Talent Tree, however it now shares space with Omen of Clarity and Efflorescence. From this point, in order to go for the larger heals, a player would likely choose Improved Life Bloom, Improved Wild Growth, and of course Activate Tranquility, a major area of effect healing spell which is still resto exclusive at this point of the alpha. Further down, we then have a new healing improvement spell that piggybacks off of wild growth called Unstoppable Growth, where the heal over time falls off 15-30% to 30 less over time. There are other great spells on this branch such as Nourish, which heals a party member for triple the amount the more mastery you stack on your gear. And of course, Soul of the Forest, which if used correctly, pumps up your next regrowth, rejuvenation, or wild growth spell by 75% to 200%. Additionally, a new spell called Inner Peace reduces the cooldown of Tranquility by 30 seconds on the first rank, followed by 60 seconds on the second rank. It additionally provides a 20% reduction to knockbacks when channeling Tranquility. We of course have a familiar spell, Scenarian Ward, which protects a friendly target for 30 seconds, and a new spell called Abundance, where for each rejuvenation spell you have active, it reduces regrowth's mana cost by 6%, but increases its critical strike heals by 6%. We have the spell Spring Blossoms, where each target healed by a fluorescence is healed for a small amount of additional healing for over 6 seconds. So imagine a mini version of Tranquility. It looks like Restoration Druids won't be disappointed with the variety of healing they'll have this time around, as customization for specific battles will play a much bigger role. Finally, we have our Feral Talent Tree. We have our familiar spells such as Tiger's Fury, Omen of Clarity, etc. It looks like most of the talents are aimed towards increasing damage according to how many bleeds are on your targets, and a couple of other spells that help reduce energy cost. First, we have Scent of Flood which reduces the cost of swipe by 3 energy according to how many are damaged by Thresh. Within the first threshold, you can choose between two spells called Predator, which resets the cooldown of Tiger's Fury every time an enemy dies and adds 5 seconds to the energy boost, and Sabretooth, which if you choose to place a talent into Ferocious Bite, deals 20% increased damage and increases the duration of rip on your target by 1 second per combo point spent. Now we can't talk about Feral Talents without combo points, and it looks like the devs are definitely going for this focus within the 8 point talent threshold. The spell Berserk Relentless has the player go berserk for 20 seconds, giving finishing moves a 20% chance per combo point spent to refund 2 combo points. 
Currently on Alpha, this spell also combines with other Berserk talent abilities. Think of it as Convoke the Spirit spell from your Night Fae Covenant, but with all Berserk spells instead of 16 random Druid spells a powerful talent in terms of combo and energy control. There are two new AoE spells for Feral Druids called Primal Wrath and Brutal Slash. The first being a finishing move that deals instant damage and applies rip to all enemies within 8 yards. The latter striking all nearby enemies with a massive slash, but deals reduced damage beyond 5 targets. Both spells award a combo point when used, so choose wisely. Now the rest of the Feral Tree involves more combo point situational spells, improvement spells, and a couple of hybrid spells that involve more healing. But we'll leave that for the player to explore. All this goes to show that hybridization is definitely back and it looks like there are going to be some interesting druid setups out there in Azeroth. This concludes our rough overview of the new druid talent trees currently available in the Dragonfly Alpha. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to Bonus Roll Productions to keep up with our continuing Dragonflight Alpha coverage. This is the Queen of Murlocs. Thank you for watching, and remember, never adventure alone.